Many of us exclaimed, What an order! I can't go through with it. Do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is that we are willing to grow along spiritual lines. The principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. Of course, there are countless ways to pray and meditate. However, they do suggest that we try following these instructions on how to practice two-way prayer. At night, we review the day's activities. The directions start the next line down. It says, when we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves that should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. Just want to make a quick uh, note here. In the evening review, when it says at the end, inquire what corrective measures should be taken, inquire is in reference to meditation. So when it says inquire, what it's saying is we go into meditation and ask God for any corrective measures. This paragraph contains the fourth reference to the AA test for self-will. Nevertheless, it's still the opposite of the test for God's will based on the four absolutes. We use the same test during our morning meditation to check our guidance. In the next paragraph, we're provided with directions for conducting a morning quiet time. It says, on awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin... We ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. Under these conditions, we we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. After all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. Now, let's look at the sentence beginning with, Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking. These words are very important. Before we begin. Before we begin what? Before we begin listening to God. How do we know we're supposed to listen to God? Because right afterward it says, We ask God to direct our thinking. Remember, our thinking is not always okay. We're asking God to direct our thinking. So doesn't it stand to reason that our next thoughts are going to be from our higher power? Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, what do we do with these thoughts? We write them down. Now, we're pretty good at forgetting things, so we think it's important to write things down so we can follow on the guidance. In the third paragraph on page 86, we're told our higher power will provide us with the answers to all our questions. It is essential that we sit quietly, especially during periods of stress or uncertainty, so we can clearly hear what God has to say. It says, in thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised how the right answers come after we have, after we have tried this for a while. So God is going to speak to us through inspiration and intuitive thought or a decision. If the one who has all power, if the one who has all power is going to supply us with the right answers, wouldn't it be a good idea to jot them down so we don't forget them? Our early AA pioneers constantly wrote down the guidance and direction they received during their quiet time, like Brian spoke about earlier. They found it very effective. With time and practice, we will begin to trust our vital sixth sense, 
our God consciousness. Now go to the first sentence on the next page, please. It says, what used to be a hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we're going to be inspired at all times. We might pray, we might pay for this presumption in all sorts of observed actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on a plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. Dependence on a higher power, we become, we come to rely upon it. To protect ourselves from absurd actions and ideas, and you can be sure they will crop up on occasion. We test our thoughts with the four standards of honesty, unselfishness, purity, and love. We end our morning prayer and meditation by asking our higher power to show us all day long what to do and how to do it. In the next paragraph, we are urged to pray. We usually conclude that period of meditation with the prayer that we, be sh- that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be. They've been given whatever we need to, need to to take care of, whatever we need to to take care of such problems. We ask especially from freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us wasted a lot of time doing that and you can use, and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. Now keep in mind that It's okay to pray for ourselves as long as it isn't selfish. You know, if we have, it's a like we don't want to pray for winning the lottery, but there's nothing wrong with praying for financial stability. There's a big difference, you know, without being greedy. We can pray for a good night's sleep, you know. We can pray to be of maximum service to our higher power. There are many good things that we can pray for for ourselves. Just check it against the four absolutes, and then you know whether it's whether it's uh, good or not. Now we're going to go to the next paragraph, and here it's suggested that we take a quiet time every time we're troubled or confused. We relax and listen for guidance and direction. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful, and ask for the right thought or action. We are constantly reminding ourselves we are no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. And there are some more promises. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, and foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It works. It really does. This is an ironclad guarantee. It works. From firsthand experience, we can state that two-way prayer has been working in our lives ever since we began a daily quiet time. But what if we don't receive any God-given ideas, emotions, or attitudes? Let us assure you this can happen at any time. But remember, all we have All we really have is a daily reprieve contingent upon the maintenance of our spiritual condition. If we don't feel the presence of God, it means we have work to do. Maybe we've taken back our will in some area of our lives, or maybe we haven't made a a necessary amends. If this is the case, we take the actions that reconnect us to the to our higher power. However, it may be simply that we are focusing on our senses being aware of what we hear, see, or feel. When we're present, we are exactly where our higher power wants us to be, not resenting our past or fearing our future, but instead being content right here, right now. Starting with the second paragraph on page 88, we are told once again that we need our higher power's help. It says, we alcoholics are undisciplined. And how? So we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. But this is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. Okay, here's how it works. When we finish our morning quiet time and we've done our writing, we check what we put on paper. Now, if what we have written is honest, pure, unselfish, and loving, we can be assured that these thoughts are God-directed. 
Conversely, if what we have written down is dishonest, resentful, selfish, or fearful, we can be equally assured these thoughts are self-directed. In the order for two-way prayer to be successful, we must constantly practice being in the presence of God. If we do the work, we will receive the rewards, a life filled with power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction. We want you to know that we take the 11th step on a regular basis. Talking and listening to our higher power has changed our lives, and it will change your life too, if you're willing to practice prayer and meditation daily. Remember, our higher power has given us free will. We're free not to listen to the God-directed messages we receive, but we must be prepared to accept the consequences if we choose not to follow God's guidance. Now, we find that during our period of quiet time, God's grace has quietly entered our souls so that we will have new power and strength, which will enable us to do that which we could never do before. We will not be conscious of this happening while we are engaged in this quiet time, but we will notice its powerful effect on us throughout the rest of the day. This does not mean that we will never be troubled during the day, but we will find ourselves winning the struggle against pride, resentment, fear, and anxiety over and over. Over again, in, especially in situations where those temptations always defeated us before, we will find the proof in our own lives that this kind of meditation works. As we continue doing this every morning for weeks and months and years, we will find ourselves growing incredibly at the spiritual level. Our entire lives will be transformed. Meditating the way the early AA people taught us is a rich and powerful way of making rapid spiritual progress and gaining true happiness and freedom. Now we're going to uh, try to explain this a little bit further. Okay. It's just this simple. We use a little book that we can carry around with us. It's something that I can refer to throughout the day because I can write it down and forget it. But if I keep it with me, I can see what it is. I also keep it short and sweet because, as we said, we are undisciplined. So I write one page, sometimes a little bit more, but mostly I try to keep it to one page. And then, whatever I write down, I look, go down it and see where's my will, where's God's will. And where God's will is, is that's my direction for the day. And sometimes I keep getting the same thing over and over, which means maybe I'm being a little stubborn or it's taking me a little while to learn my lesson. Often being present is there a lot in mind. Be present. And then I save the other side of the page to listen to what my sharing partner has written because sometimes I hear a message that I need to hear from someone else. And it comes to me, you know, my higher power is working through them the same way as I hear things at a meeting. And I also use my book for that. I'll jot down things that I feel are messages I need to hear and abide by, guidance that I need to pay attention to. Okay, we're going to take a five-minute quiet time and practice step 11 and listen to God. We're going to ask him to direct our thinking so thoughts that come are coming from God. Now, how do we know the difference between what's coming from God and what's coming from us? We use the four absolutes. Is it honest, pure, unselfish, and loving? It must pass all four absolutes. If it fails one of the liabilities of self-will, which is dishonesty, resentment, and fear, and selfishness. It only has to have one, one liability to fail the guidance. Uh, that is coming from self, and we're interested in what is passing the four absolutes. So we're going to take a couple minutes here to get paper and pencil, and we're going to have a prayer where... Uh, Catherine is going to give us a prayer, and then after the prayer, there's going to be five minutes of quiet time, and we can practice this meditation. Now, it does say in the big book, you know, in the morning to practice meditation, and in the evening, we practice meditation. This is our conscious contact with God as we understand Him. So again, we're going to uh, practice step 11. And 
As we write down our meditation after the five minutes is up, we will share this in the meeting. If you feel comfortable, please share it in the meeting. It's um, it's nice to have some kind of ritual around it where you do a reading or something. Some people like to breathe deeply or have a special place that they sit every day and do this, a quiet place somewhere you feel comfortable, somewhere that you're honoring this, you know, this procedure. Okay. Well, and again, you know, this is a this is a spiritual exercise like everything else. So is prayer. Now, what we like to do. Uh, one time, I was doing my prayer and meditation a few years ago, and I and I got the the uh, the message or the direction to write what I all I could think of calling it was a pre-prayer prayer, <laughs> something to get me in the right space, you know, so that I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't off base, and and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this prayer, and then we're all going to sit quietly and write down whatever comes to mind, and we and for just two or three minutes. And remember, you can't do this wrong, and you can't fake it either. <laughs> it's gonna, it's just going to happen. It'll be fun. We're gonna we're going to uh, hear what some of these uh, responses are that we get. It's really exciting. Okay, here is our. Uh, Here's the prayer I wrote. God, during this quiet time, I pray that my writing will reflect that my life is presently being guided by unselfishness, honesty, purity, and love. I pray to now open myself to receive your guidance and direction. I pray for the will to take your direction in a timely manner that I may continue to grow spiritually and experience a profound life of serenity and joy. Amen. Okay, let's do our writing. Okay, I'm going to cut out the five-minute quiet time that normally would be in the tape. We actually play this on a Sunday night meeting. And after Catherine's prayer, there would be five minutes of silence. But in this video, I'm going to cut it out, and that way uh, you would get the additional information concerning two-way and three-way prayer. Okay, we'll stop there. That was about four minutes. It's a long time when we sit quietly with our higher power, isn't it? It feels good. Well, thank you for doing this exercise with us. We realize that these messages can be very personal and are normally discussed with only your sponsor or sharing partner. However, if you believe the group can benefit from what you have received, we're asking you to share it with us now. In addition, you will be helping those who are still struggling with the 11th step to see how God discloses himself to us. Now, only share what you have written without further explanation. We'll be here all day otherwise. (laughs) And I know it's tempting, but, you know, you'll have a chance to share this with other people in the future. Now, let's keep it simple. I always want to try to keep it simple. Now, who is willing to start us off with what they have written down? After everybody has shared their guidance, we have what we call three-way prayer. Now, this is something you've heard the expression, God talks through people. Uh, The three-way prayer is in reference to guidance that you've shared tonight in the meeting that has helped somebody else in the meeting. And that's considered three-way prayer. So, in other words... We're going to share our guidance that we receive from our five-minute meditation. Write it down, and we're going to share it. After we're all done sharing our two-way prayer with God, anybody in the room that has listened to your guidance and has benefited from their guidance is considered three-way prayer, and we encourage you to write that down. So we will share the three-way prayer immediately after we share the guidance from you, your meditation. Hopefully that makes sense. I Again, basically we're going to share our meditation as we write it down on the paper. After we're all done, people in the room who have benefited from your guidance will write that down also. And that's considered three-way prayer. So we encourage you to write down anything that you hear from somebody else, and we'll share that also. 
and that's called three-way prayer.